easy to be apathetic to the plight of woodland caribou. Many of us have seen nature videos that depict caribou by the thousands, but not all caribou species are created equal. Uh, if there's so many caribou wandering around up in the northern tundra, why worry about woodland caribou? They are genetically distinct animals, and the woodland caribou itself, because of its attachment to boreal forest, is, in my mind, the ambassador for boreal forest. And that band of boreal forest that stretches across our entire country, in fact, all the way around the world, is one of the most important carbon sinks we have on the planet. And the intact boreal forest, the, the largest chunk of it, is in Canada. And I think Canadians have an obligation as stewards of that resource to protect the boreal forest. And so, if you protect caribou and you protect woodland caribou habitat, you are, by definition, protecting boreal forest. So I think they're an incredibly important ambassador species for that, for that ecosystem. Well, currently the status of woodland caribou in Alberta is threatened. Uh, there was a time back in uh, the late 80s when they were actually listed as endangered. There has been a historical population in Banff National Park. And not very long ago, I was at Chateau Lake Louise and I saw caribou trophies on the wall. So there were some very large and healthy caribou living in Banff National Park for most of its history. But in 2009, the last remnant herd of Banff caribou was wiped out by an avalanche. So they've now been extirpated from that national park, which is a shame because it's an iconic species. It's probably in all of our pockets if we're carrying around a quarter. It is the animal on the back of the quarter. Uh, some people think it's an elk, but it's actually a caribou. And it was inspired by caribou in places like Banff National Park. So those animals are now gone. The biggest threat facing the woodland caribou in Canada's boreal forests is what experts call linear disturbance. And so with, uh, with anything that, that creates a, a cut into an old growth forest, uh, creates access for predators. And so roads, um, industrial operations, uh, forestry operations, oil and gas operations, things of that nature, uh, seismic lines. Uh, these kinds of things open up a forest to wolves, essentially. And so when wolves get in, into, onto these, these uh, access points, they can get right into the middle of, of woodland caribou range. And when they get there, they find that woodland caribou are pretty easy pickings. And so they overhunt the caribou and the populations start to decline. And the two sources of linear disturbance currently are forestry and oil and gas. Oil and gas guys, I, I talk with them all the time about, about um, caribou. They're concerned about caribou too, because when they're not at work, they're just like me. They, they worry about nature, they worry about endangered species, and they, they don't want to be the guys who, who push them to extinction. So they're trying to do their part as well. Sometimes regulation can be changed to, to benefit something like caribou. Like it's, it's interesting that an oil and gas operation might create a linear disturbance. And in order to, if, if the oil and gas operation wants to go back into a site, say a drilling site, and reuse it 20 years later, they want to maintain the lease. But in order to maintain their control of the land, they need to, to they can't recover and rehabilitate the lease. So they, they can't replant the road, take the road out and let the, the lease grow back in and, and put the habitat back the way it was. Because they, they're, potentially they could lose their rights to the land. And so there's, if we could all get together at the table, the regulation, the, 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 the government regulators, the industry people, and the, the scientific community, I bet we could come up with a solution for caribou. Although we benefit from these industries, we're quick to vilify both forestry and oil and gas. Issues regarding woodland caribou seem remote and distant from our day-to-day -day lives. If they're anything like me, it's, it's a lot of these issues are out of sight and out of mind. Like caribou are a species that exist up north. Uh, they live in the boreal forest. That doesn't have that impact on my life here in Calgary in an urban setting like this, and yet it does. Uh, what happens to caribou has a big impact on us, and, and the caribou numbers and how we protect them will have an impact on forestry and oil and gas development. And so there has to be a way to let industrial development proceed because we all need that sort of thing in our lives, but there also has to be a way of protecting caribou because we all depend on the ecosystem services that the forest and the caribou and so on provide. There are many instances in which humans have destroyed or negatively altered an environment. In most cases, the damage is irreversible. But uh, many people believe, and I believe, that, that 
linear disturbance can happen and then be reversed. Things can be rehabilitated. Um, and uh, so I think that there's, it, it just depends on how, maybe how long the linear disturbance exists on the landscape. I think there's work to be done with, with possibly controlling wolf populations in places where they're hammering caribou. So there's some, some, maybe some benefit that can happen there to caribou populations. I think there's some solutions. I, I, I don't believe that, that uh, we have to put a moratorium on all industrial development in order to protect caribou. I think that uh, some landscape needs to be protected. Uh, that those protected areas need to have connectivity to other protected areas so that animals can move back and forth. But I don't think we need to take the whole map and the whole boreal forest and say that's, that's for caribou. Uh, I'm not sure that's practical and it might be a little naive and, and probably not even possible. So um, I think we should be thinking about protected areas and connectivity and, and mitigating the damage that we do. And I, I, the guys I talk to in industry seem to be willing to do that. So I, I think there's hope for caribou. That's the short story. <laughs>